What is up, everybody? Logan here again today with another video. We're in visor mode today, boys. I just felt like wearing it right now. I've been golfing a lot. A couple of things I want to go over in this video, but I'm going to show you guys how I made $900 today completely tax free. Uh, so, to do that, I have a Roth IRA. Uh, a couple of things about the Roth IRA that money, unless you pay a fee on it, isn't accessible until you're 59 and a half. So, it's money I've tucked away for retirement. So, I don't really have very much greed because I'm only 22. And, you know, by the time I'm 59 and a half or 60 or whatever, by the time I end up pulling that money, um, that's so far away right now. I mean, that is 38 years away. So I don't risk very much in this account and I don't really shoot for that much a day. Uh, it's just, you know, if I can get anywhere from 400 to a thousand dollars, just trading zero DTEs, that's my plan. So let's jump in now that we got the tax free portion of the title figured out. Let's jump into how I did this, what I look for as far as positioning myself. This is trading credit spreads on the S&P 500, right? You got to remember that. So a couple of my favorite things I like to use is the volume distribution. We have the advanced decline. This shows the shares on the New York Stock Exchange advancing and declining, right? We get to see the volume. And then we have the tick chart right here. And this, I like the one minute tick chart. And anytime the ticks are helpful is whenever we're above 700 or below 700, that signifies heavy buying and heavy selling. So it helps me even more when it comes to finding my entries. But you guys know I like this 10 day, 30 minute chart here. So we'll maximize the sell. Um, I immediately started with call credits and that's all I ran today. Recall credit spreads. We'll go over to my monitor tab and the account statement so you guys can see what I'm talking about real quick. So you guys can see right here, 900 is my P&L for the day. If we flip this open, I had 10, 4165, 4175 call credit spreads. So I was risking $10,000 to make 900. Uh, and a couple things too, the day before CPI day has been red a little bit lately, but also on days that it was green, it wasn't green very much. So once we opened up, Apple filled the gap, I decided to put the trades on. And you guys can see here, are the filled orders. So I got 90 credit on these. I called them out to the discord. I think I said, Hey, you know, start working these at 85 and I did get filled at 90. So that's a nice 9% return on my money. And in my other account, we did take profit early. And then in my small account, I let these go because I was only rocking 10 of them. So anytime I'm rocking like 20 contracts, I'm always in and out, right? Cause I'm just trying to reduce my risk. Um, but with these guys, I already had opened them with about a 91% chance of working out and I let them expire at the end of the day. So if we go back to the charts, you guys can see the timestamp on these are 949.21 Eastern time. So the market had only been open for 19 minutes. So over here, I already had the signal telling me, this is my little arrow that's telling me, hey, we're underneath the moving averages, right? They're starting to cross. So this is on the 10 day, 30 minute chart. So that was my first number. That's the number one step that I saw this morning. First, I saw the RSI going negative and we're underneath the moving averages, which is a really good sign that it's going to struggle to get above these. We have a couple pivot points in that 4140 range as well. So I threw myself up at that 4165 range, which yesterday happened to be a pretty resistful area, right? And it's more like a zone. Like if I drew a box here for you guys to take a look at. And then that's what I was monitoring the rest of the day. Hey, are we going to break above these moving averages? I also didn't think we would in general because it was CPI pre-day, right? It's the day before CPI. And we have seen a lot of movement because there have been early releases or people that have gotten their hands on information the morning before it comes out. CPI does come out tomorrow morning, Wednesday, August 10th, depending on when you're watching this video. So this is how I like to trade those days. And you guys can see it was a really easy setup. We could not even break the 10 most of the day until the end of the day. We got shut down by the 21 day um, on this time frame. So this is my favorite day trading chart. I do expect us to come down and retest these because if that's one thing you guys notice here is as we ride this trend, the market doesn't like to get too far from our longer term moving averages, the 195 and the 390 right here. So I expect us to see some red CPI news, push us down to 4070, maybe even down to 4015, right? And we still have that gap to fill at 3900 down here. That is yet to fill 
most gaps get filled, like 90 some percent of them. So keep that in mind. Um, we did get the squeeze back here on this time frame. Didn't really do too much, just a little bit of volatility. Uh, but the market is getting pretty exhausted. The buyers are exhausted from buying up here in general. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at what we get tomorrow. But that is how I made the decisions for this trade. I took the expected move math. Looking at these moving averages, let's hop over to SPX. And you guys can see, if we go into tomorrow, we have an expected move of 50 points to each side from today's close. Rarely do we exceed this. Now, granted, this year, I would say it's been about 12 days that our next day's daily move has exceeded this, maybe closer to 14, 15. I'll have to get that sheet out again. Um, but only three times in July did we exceed this at all for what the next day's expected move for, was from close. So tomorrow, expect us to close within 50 points of 41.22 to the upside or the downside. Personally, I think it's going to be to the downside, but I don't care because I just day trade. So that's a really popular way for me to day trade is if I see 41.22, which I'll have to get a whiteboard out for this to explain in a video in the future. But if I see 41.22, right, and I know it's a 50 point difference, I'll wait to see where we open in the morning. If we're flirting with like 40, 70, which is right around that 50 point difference, I'll come down to maybe 40, 20, 40, 10. And granted, these would be different probabilities at the time, but I like to look for anywhere I can get a 10% or below return because what that allows me to do is have extra runway. So if we do exceed the expected move, because it happens, don't be a dummy, right? Seriously, don't be dumb. Don't be down in my comments like, oh, Logan, you said we only exceeded it so many days. I went we dropped 40 points. I, I was 45 points away and blew my whole account at the end of the day. Don't be stupid. Don't do that. That's so stupid. Don't do that. Right. Because you never know which day is going to exceed the expected move. What if the only day we exceeded it that whole month, you put your whole account in, or you put a big portion of your account that you normally don't because you felt confident and your emotions lied to you when you were in your decision-making process, then what? then you're toasted. You're literally setting yourself back at least a month, maybe two, depending on how much risk you put on. And then you come down to my comments and get all frustrated or whatever. Like, don't be stupid. Don't do that stuff. So wait for the trade to come to you. Look for the moving averages. Look at where we're at on these charts here, right? Okay, let's do call credits because we're below the moving averages. That's the smarter thing to do here. Use common sense of CPI data is tomorrow. That's how I made this trade. And I gave myself enough room to where if we did break these, I could number one, monitor it, potentially stop out because CPI is tomorrow, take a small loss and move on to the next day because you can trade zero DTEs every single day now. There is no reason to get too frustrated if you get stopped out, if you lose a trade, if something runs away from you, you can always just roll into the next day too if you need to. And then boom, all your problems are solved right there. So that's something to be, you know, a little more conscious of, I would say, as we come into CPI day tomorrow, but just day trading in general, I'll whip up some statistics. I have math that I want to show you guys for how I pick these a little bit better. Um, but really my goal is wherever I can put myself where my probability is high, I can get a smaller return on my capital. And then just every day over time, grow this account. I think I'm up three grand on my Roth IRA in the last five trading days, just doing the strategy, not risking over $10,000 per trade because my Roth only has 30 grand in it. So I am risking a little heftier amount, but being able to stop out really helps me out. And eventually my plan is to get the Roth up to close to hundred K over the next couple of years, whether that's through trading it, but it's all tax-free gains anyway. So that is one important thing. If you're looking at growing your money tax-free, you would have to open up a Roth IRA to do that and then get approved for options. And then there you go. Your post-tax money, money you've already paid tax on, can grow tax-free in a Roth IRA. It's a retirement account. The government literally puts it there to help you. And unless you make, I think it's over like $250 a year, you can have one and contribute to it. But granted, you can still trade in one and all that money is tax-free for you there. So 
that's going to be everything for me in this video. I hope this helped you guys. If you guys want to come trade with us in the Discord, I've been 34 for 35 in my last 35 zero DTE trades. I did get stopped out one day. It would have been a winner, whatever. But the link to join is below. I really appreciate the support. Just don't be dumb. Don't over risk yourself. Don't over trade because of greed. Just handle what you can handle. Stick to what you do because nobody cares how much money you make except you. I promise nobody cares. So get that greed out of your head, get all that crap out of your head and try to attack the market, do the right things over and over. But that's going to be everything for me. And I will see you guys in the next video.